morning, friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage, available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. That's also the name of my website if you'd like to go over and order some supplies. And here's what we'll be working on for today. I found this guitar in a thrift store for less than $10. It's a child's guitar, which made it perfect to upcycle into something that looks much nicer than it currently does. So I'll show you the steps that I took in order to turn this into something that we can display. And the first thing I did was I removed all of the guitar strings and just moved them out of the way. And depending on how high gloss of a surface you have, you may want to take some sandpaper and rough the whole surface up, especially on the front here. I'm just taking isopropyl alcohol, the 91%, and I'm cleaning the whole guitar off the front and the back. I wanna get every bit of oil or fingerprint, every trace of that off of this guitar before I paint it. And I'm taking low tack painter's tape and I'm going at the very base of these guitar strings to protect them from the paint. And I'm going to put a coat of gesso over the whole guitar and I'm using a roller brush for it just gives a much smoother coverage but in these small areas here you can use a sponge brush and kind of pounce in there in order to get into those smaller spaces. And the same goes for the top here where you string the guitar back together. I used a sponge brush, a small artist's brush, and the roller brush, a combination of all of those. And this is just the first coat of gesso. Don't worry if it looks a little choppy because we're going to clean that up with the next layer of paint and that will be the chalk paint. I also put a couple of coats of paint on the inside of the sound hole. That is called the sound hole, uh, believe it or not. And I painted on the inside there too because you can see it. I'm sorry if the camera's a little shaky here. I'm trying to show you. I painted these keys, the tuning keys in the back, with a small artist's brush, but you want to make sure you keep turning those keys so that the paint doesn't get all jammed up. And then I used a roller over the top of it again. Now I'm going to begin to chalk paint over the dried gesso. You want to make sure that gesso is dry. And I'm making sure that the background of my napkin color matches my chalk paint so that the napkin background will just become invisible so you don't have to do too much cutting or tearing and I'm just going to go over this the same way I did with the gesso and again especially with the chalk paint you want to make sure you keep spinning these keys so that the gears and the keys don't get jammed up in there from using the chalk paint, which is a bit of a heavier paint. Now on the back and the side of the guitar, I used this special chalk paint brush and kind of went in a crisscross pattern. And you can get this at most big box stores and of course on my website. Before you decoupage, it's a very good idea to just make a crude drawing like I did here and plan out where you'd like to put your images on the guitar. Now once you have a good idea of what flowers or images you're going to need and where, you can take a thin paintbrush and a bowl of water and wet the brush and go around the images and tear them out as closely as you can to the image. So you just wet along the napkin right outside of your image and then you'll want to tear it. You'll also want to place your thumb over the image so that you don't tear the image and just pull the paper away like this. And you'll want to do this for all of your images until you have enough to complete the front of your guitar. And don't separate the napkins yet. You want to make sure you're done tearing them out like this 
Uh, otherwise, they are too thin and fragile and you won't be able to work with them. They'll stick to your fingers and tear up. So just make sure you wait until these are all done and dry and then you separate them. It's also a good idea to place your images down before you decoupage them all over just to make sure it's an appealing pattern to you. And you want to make sure everything's dry, your napkin's separated, and you have some plastic wrap or saran wrap handy. And just put some decoupage glue right over the area where you're going to decoupage your first image. And it's fine if the image overlaps. And what you want to do is then put your image down and tap it lightly and then take your saran wrap and take a piece of it and pull it tightly over the surface and pull that down and use your fingers now to press the napkin into place. And you want to get into the habit of throwing each piece of saran wrap away so that for each napkin piece or image you have a new piece of saran wrap. And for these areas, what I did was I placed decoupage glue in the center, my napkin down over it, and then I just took some scissors and cut into the areas where I was going to need to go around a few of these images. And I repeated that in a couple of areas on the guitar where it was a little bit tricky. And I overlapped a lot of the edges here and I let the whole surface dry and then I took my nail file and by the way I did overlap in the center there also and I let everything dry I then filed away all of the excess and once I was done I added a coat of decoupage glue over the whole surface and let it dry and I'm using a matte finish but let that dry completely I then took a combination of archival ink, this ink pad, because we're not going to emboss and I'm going to stamp script randomly all around the guitar, just on the front actually. And I'm also going to use a product called Stays On and that's also an ink pad because we're going to put a top coat over this and you don't want it to run and i'm just putting a few dragonflies around the surface also now you can use a heat gun on this but keep it at a distance because it will melt the decoupage glue and since we're not embossing we technically don't need it i then took this antiquing medium and this very flexible toothbrush and I put a little antiquing medium and water in a dish that's too much antiquing medium <laughs> and I mixed it together and you may want to practice this first just to get a feel for you want to make sure that your paint isn't too thick or too thin and you get a look at the pattern when you practice that way and I'm going to spritz this or flick it all over the surface and I'm putting these cords into a plastic baggie so that they don't get the paint all over them and I can move these around a little bit more easily. It's a very subtle effect but it adds to the aging process and it looks quite natural when you're all through. Now if you got any paint, the, the chalk paint or the gesso on the cords you can just take some nail polish remover on some cotton and just go over the cords a couple of times and it, it'll take that off. You may have to use a little bit of elbow grease, but it'll still remove it just fine. Now once everything is dry, you want to use a top coat or varnish over the surface of your guitar. And I'm going for an aged look, so vintage look, so I'm using a matte finish and I'm going to cover the whole guitar. The front where I've decoupaged, 
but even all of the other places, if there's paint on it, I'm going to varnish it or put this top coat on. And you may need two top coats. Now that the top coat has dried, I took, I made a diagram showing which guitar strings went where. You may not need to do that, but I had to do that. And I just strung everything back together again. I also took wire cutters and clipped away all of this excess. And here is our completed guitar looking very different than when we started. And thank you so much you guys for your lovely comments. Probably the most common question I'm asked is where I get my napkins. There are links below in the description of this video letting you know where to get the napkins and I've got quite a few sources for that. My website link is down there where you can also get napkins and most of the supplies you see here. And thank you so much for subscribing. Don't forget Upcycle with Decoupage is also on Facebook. But when you subscribe and you make comments, it really helps me and it keeps me going forward and putting these new videos out every week. And I look so forward to doing this. So thank you so much for letting me do this. I will see you next week with another video. Don't forget to like and follow my Upcycle with Decoupage Facebook page so that you're notified every week when I put out a new video. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.